Let's -a go. This video is sponsored and approved by Raycon. Super Mario 3D Land's introduction is something that I find pretty darn interesting. Years ago when I was making a video about Princess Peach's castle in various Mario games, I turned my attention to the intro sequence for Super Mario 3D Land. When you normally boot up the game, we see Mario running through a level as the logo pops up on screen. If the player waits long enough though, the screen will eventually transition into a training room of sorts. This is supposed to be inside of Princess Peach's castle, and it features a few platforms you can jump on and a few toads inside. I always found this to be pretty neat, because if you never waited long enough during the game's introduction, you would never even know this explorable room exists. But these two areas are sort of blocked off from the grand scheme of things. More than anything, I wanted to see what the full level contained for that title sequence. There's tons of things Mario doesn't interact with, so it certainly piqued my interest. So in today's video, we're doing just that. We're visiting Super Mario 3D Land's unplayable intro to see what neat things it contains. It's summertime. So you know what that means? It's time for me to stop being a potato. Even though I spent the last few months running laps in Mario Maker, it's time for me to peel myself off the couch and actually see what the sun looks like. Thankfully, with a little motivation from Raycon earbuds, that's a lot easier. When dangling headphone wires get snagged on things, not only does it hurt my ears and make me cry in agony, but it makes it so I have to stop whatever I'm doing to readjust them again. Having no wires is one of the many reasons Raycon's earbuds are great. Not only do they sound as good as other top audio brands, but they're also like half the price. They're great for listening to music or podcasts, working out, and so much more, while keeping what you listen to private, but vibrant. The Everyday E25 is their latest model that comes in a lot of fun colors, and is their best model yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, and additional bass, all with a slick compact design that gives you a noise isolating fit. So to upgrade your earbud experience today, click my link, buyraycon.com slash swankybox in the description below to get 15% off your order. And a huge thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video and supporting me as a creator. So starting off, I should mention that both of these intro sequences, Mario running through the castle map and Mario sitting inside the castle are both linked. Despite the game transitioning, both of these areas are located on the same exact map within the game. The castle interior is stored far to the right, way out of bounds, and the level itself is off to the left. Due to the fixed camera angles, the player would never be able to see the other area from while in the opposite area. The 3D game cameras behave very differently than a lot of other 3D Mario cameras, so any object outside the field of view will always disappear, even if we manipulate the camera within the game. The only way to fix this would be to assign a different camera. So since we know both of these areas are within the same place, that means we can use the castle interior spawn to give us access to the first part of the world. We simply change the placement of Mario Part 2 to match up with the beginning of Part 1. So when the game goes to spawn Mario into the castle, it will instead spawn Mario outside. Since we are in the second part of the title screen loop, movement is restored to us and we are free to move around. There are a couple interesting things to note about this world though. For starters, we're playing the game without loading a save file. This is a bit weird, because nothing we do counts. Beyond that, if we try to pause the game at all, the game will advance to the true title screen. We are still playing by the rules of the intro sequence, so we need to be careful. Mario is capable of running and jumping as usual. Because the computer controlled Mario already ran through this part of the world, that means any blocks or powers Mario obtained will already be gone. However, there's still a ton of blocks to be hit. As we start off, the area near the beginning of the stage has a path that loops around that Mario normally enters the field of view through. This path abruptly ends off camera, but there are still a few blocks we can hit to nab us some coins that have been sitting here for quite a long time. Generally speaking, it seems that most of the blocks on the stage give us coins. Going out of our way to get blocks that Mario normally runs by shows that almost all of them have a shiny gold coin inside. However, I did notice that there are some blocks that are inaccessible. The collision for the castle wall extends up past the blocks that are on top of it. Trying to get these blocks is basically impossible, because we can't get underneath them to strike them. The collision for this wall is a huge rectangle, and the top of the rectangle just passes the top of the blocks. So even though it looks like we could just ground pound these blocks, we actually can't. They will respond as if they aren't hit. If we check the files within the game, we can see that these four off-axis blocks do include coins though. Something I do find interesting is that within the first starting area, there are several brick block bridges that Mario crosses. Despite these brick blocks looking like every other brick block out there, they can't be broken open. 
They aren't real brick blocks at all. They are actually baked into the 3D model of the map itself, and just happen to look like the brick blocks we are used to. Once we cross them, there are several other blocks we can break, and we can even climb inside the castle wall and explore the interior. The collision ends early, so we can basically walk on top of it. However, at the end of this level is essentially nothing. Mario typically jumps off the side as the screen transitions, and both the place he jumps off from and the continued path lead to nothing at all. We've reached the end of the world. In reality, we're just on top of a huge green rectangle full of grass. We can run onto the field and all the way back to the start. We can also fall off the map too, but there's nothing really down there. Given the weird constraints of this world though, there were a few interesting things I wanted to find out. One, where does the mysterious green pipe lead to? And two, what happens if Mario dies in this world? So let's start with one. There's a random green pipe at the start of the level that Mario normally runs by. This is interesting because pipes like this usually let Mario enter them. They are typically placed in pairs with a main pipe leading to a child pipe that completes the warp. However, this pipe isn't so friendly. You see, if Mario goes down this pipe, he's deleted from existence. It's like starting an A-Press but never letting go. The world simply collapses. When Mario enters this pipe, the game puts Mario in limbo because it normally is supposed to spawn Mario in the child pipe. But there is only one pipe on this entire map, so the first half of the process begins and then awaits for the second half to finish. But the second half doesn't exist, so Mario enters a green pipe never to return, deleted from existence with a snap of a finger. So that's grim, but let's move on to something far less grim, like killing Mario. So for my second question, I wanted to know what happens to Mario when he dies on a map where he technically doesn't have extra lives, or at least in theory he doesn't. Perhaps the game is just hiding the HUD, but it's hard to tell. So I spawned some Goomba Towers to thwart Mario during his intro sequence. I figured if he took damage, he'd die when he got to the shell, but unfortunately that never happened. Somehow, Mario escaped death. Because the Goombas messed with Mario's positioning, the auto-movement path that Mario normally follows was thrown off. He was struggling to find a place in this world, and looked like he was going crazy trying to navigate it. He ended up on the bottom of the level running through the grass before time ran out. Since Mario failed to die this way, I had to force his hand. Sounds pretty dark, but this is for science, man. So I took our plumber to the great beyond by defeating him at the hands, or lack thereof, of the deadly Goomba Tower. To my surprise, Mario died as normal. He fell through the ground, but then something interesting happened. Since there wasn't a respawn mechanic set for Mario, he just froze in time, upside down while he was shrieking in pain. Time froze for him, and he existed in this strange limbo. He suffered a terrible, terrible fate. Eh, at least we got to explore this intro stage, right? And with that, thanks for watching guys and gals. Hope you enjoyed this quick look at a place we normally can't go. And until my next video, cheers.